Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to teach you how I made my uh, butterfly Instagram graphics. Um, right, this is the graphic I'm talking about. It's this butterfly and it's got a gradient map, etc. Um, pretty neat. So let's start. First of all, we need the image. I get almost all of the images I use for my daily designs on pexels.com. They have all free license. You can do whatever you want with them. It's obviously nice if you credit the author of the photos, but it's not mandatory. So I'll drag and drop my image into Photoshop. I'll resize it however I want. Now, as you can see, this is way too big. So I'm gonna make it a little smaller, place it wherever I want. I'm now gonna right click, uh, rasterize this layer, press M on my keyboard or grab the rectangular marquee tool. I'm just gonna select the empty spaces on my canvas. To add a, another selection, I'm just gonna hold down shift and uh, that will make these two rectangle selections. I'm gonna right click on them. Content aware fill. I love this content aware fill. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> It'll basically fill the parts, the areas you selected with other parts of the image. So it's kind of like a, a smart clone stamp tool that kind of basically does everything by itself. Now it's obviously not gonna look great because this background is hard to replicate and rebuild, but we don't really care because we're going to blur our background quite a bit. So you're not going to be able to see that. Command D to deselect. Now it's time to select our subject. I'm then going to press W on my keyboard, which is the quick selection tool that you can find right about here. And I'm going to use my Wacom tablet. I'm just going to click and select my whole butterfly, fix this selection. You can, as you can see, there's a little plus sign on this icon. If you hold down Alt or Option key, it's gonna be turning into a minus. So you can use that if you selected too much. This is good for me. I'm gonna press Command J. That duplicated my butterfly my selection onto a new layer. What I'm gonna do now is grab my eraser tool and I'm basically gonna go zoom in and fix the selection a little bit. Now I don't want it to be like crazy perfect. We're gonna blur this anyway so it's not even doesn't even make sense to but more or less, just remove the bigger parts of the background. Right. Now, select your background and we're going to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. We're going to blur this a lot, kind of like this. Maybe let's go with a 10. Um, as you can see now we can we have these white bars at the top. I'm gonna command press command T and slightly adjust the size so that the white bars aren't visible anymore. Right. I'm gonna select my top layer, duplicate it because never know. I'm gonna go to filter um, blur Gaussian blur. I'm not gonna blur the butterfly as much. I'm gonna blur it maybe one. So before, after, it's a little more blurred. 
Um, I'm going to select all my layers, command G to group them together, command J to duplicate, and then I'm going to merge the group. So we now have one layer. Now to this, I'm going to go to adjustments and select the black and white adjustment. I'm going to adjust the background. Since we're going to be adding a gradient map, um, we're going to try and differentiate the dark parts of the image and the light parts. So I'm going to try and make my background the darkest parts, the blackest part, and my subject a little lighter so that when we apply the gradient map, it's going to come out as a really cool effect. So you can just play around with the slider. As you can see, the reds uh, control mostly the background. And you can just try and see what whatever you, you prefer. This looks cool to me, so I'm going to group again, duplicate, and merge. I'm now going to grab my brush tool, set it on black and low opacity, and I'm going to add some black to the background. So you can basically not see the errors anymore in the background. And there we go. I'm now going to add a gradient map. I'm just going to click on this little guy and down to the bottom, the second to last one is a gradient map. You'll get this over here. Just click on it and you have your gradient editor. Now there's got, there's already some basic ones that uh, Photoshop has. I obviously just saved my own already, but what it basically consists of is whatever color you put on this side is going to affect the dark or the shade parts of your image, whatever colors you put on this other side, um, it's going to affect the highlights. So if I want my highlights to be blue, I'm just going to double click on this and add blue and all the highlights turn blue. The cool thing about this is it's not limited to two colors, so you can add how many colors you want. You can just click along the slider to add more color points. Let's say I want my still bright parts of the image, but not the brightest parts. I want them red, but I want my highlights to be white. So just move these around till you get the effect you want. As you can see, it's the white is affecting the highlight highlights of the image and the reds are kind of like in the mid tones right now. Um, and so I just add a bunch of colors, play around with the colors. For this, I think I used this gradient, which is one of the gradients I made. Um, I usually make the ones I like, I usually just save them. And I can do that by just, whenever you find a gradient you like, just click on new and it will automatically save it over here. Um, so you can play around with this slider. As you can see, the colors change according to where you move the colors. And uh, it's such a cool method. I love gradient maps. I'm obsessed with them all the time. Um, uh, I know I can't, I, I just can't not use them. Let's see, I want more yellow in there. Anyways, you get the point. Um, I'm going to press OK when I'm happy with it. Group, duplicate, and merge. Next, I usually go to filter noise and add noise. I usually add about 8%. I feel like that's a pretty good amount, but I mean, depends on the size of your artboard, canvas, whatever. Um, I'll go with eight. I then like to I like to add some textures after that. Um, and as you guys know, I make my own textures. Um, I'll be posting more YouTube tutorials on how I make those, but I've posted a bunch on TikTok um, and Instagram Reels where I teach how to make, for now, I made some paper textures, some ripped paper textures, and plastic textures as well, which is a really cool thing to know how to do on your own. Uh, means you don't have to rely on downloading texture packs online. And you get more creativity, I guess. You can just make your own. 
So I have these poster crease textures. I'm going to zoom in, resize it, press enter. And then I'm just going to change the blending mode usually to something like lighten or screen. Um, if I feel like the texture is too harsh, I'm going to lower the opacity and fill to about 70% or whatever fits my image best. Um, and then I just keep adding textures. What I'm obsessed with are halftone textures. So I made my own of those as well. I'm going to place them in here, resize it, press enter. Not, not filling my artboard because I like small dots. I don't like big ones. I'm going to hold down Alt or Option key, click and drag to make a duplicate of this. Then I'll merge the halftones together. I usually prefer uh, them having a black background and white dots just because they work best with the type of artwork I make. So I'm going to press Command I and invert the colors of my halftone. And then after that, just change the blending mode. I usually go with something like soft light. I feel like it gives this so much more detail and it's just so cool. Um, I then like to go with about 70% opacity. Um, and lastly, I usually add a film and dust texture. Um, so something like this. Resize, change blending mode again. Screen or lighten, I think works cool. Lower the opacity, maybe 60 for this. Um, group, duplicate, merge. If I want to go the extra mile, I usually go to um, filter, camera raw filter. And if I'm not going crazy with the If I'm not going crazy for the colors I chose with my gradient map, I'm just going to go here and adjust the colors singularly. So maybe I'm feeling I want there to be more red or less green. I can just adjust every single color on its own, which is so cool. Like maybe I want less, less pink and more blue. You can easily do that. You can change also the saturation of each individual color. I like my colors not to be too bright. I kind of like them to feel a little faded, um, which is weird, I know, but that's the way I like it. So, uh, And then I adjust the luminance of my colors, which is pretty sick. It just gives you more freedom and in, in what in the colors you want to use. Press OK. Um, finally, the last thing I wanted to talk to you about is the text. So I just grab my type tool, press T. Let's say I'm just going to write fly away. So all my almost all my textures I save as um, JPEGs, PNGs, and some I save as PSD files. This is awesome for when you use um, this effect. So go to um, Filter, Distort, Displace. When you use the displacement maps, um, you want to have some PSD files of your textures. Um, Let's say I'm going to go with the 7x7, seven seven, and we'll see how that works out. Press OK. And then I'm going to go to um, my texture. And here I have one black paper texture, PSC file. I'm just going to click Open, and it will distort your text according to that. Now, that doesn't look great, so I'm going to try out a different texture. Convert to smart object. Maybe let's add about 10. And then add um, the texture you want to use. I'll use this one. All oh, right, looking way better. Look at how cool this looks. 
Um, sometimes I might as well add a threshold effect, etc. But usually this is what I do. I can always resize and place wherever I want. And yeah, that's basically it. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And please leave a like, subscribe to my channel. There's videos coming every single day. And yeah, I'll see you tomorrow.